Welcome to Mission Majima. Ajahn. Ajahn. So tell us about the Mula Pariyai Sutta Majima Nikaya number one. Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate everyone who read this. You're fantastic. Uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi himself said that if he was part of the group of people, the group of monks who ordered these suttas, he would have put it last rather than first because it is a bit of a doozy. There's a lot of language which is very specific and a bit technical and it reads overly philosophical. I myself tried reading it and couldn't even get through the three or four pages many times, uh, but recently have found it to be quite interesting. What, it, what it's doing is describing how the Buddha sees the world, specifically how four different classes of beings see the world. The Buddha describes that, and then he proscribes how one can train oneself to see the world more accurately. So the Buddha describes these four different types of beings, the unenlightened Pratuchana. Mm -hmm. So this is someone who's unenlightened. Then someone who's partially enlightened. This is a seka. This is a stream enter, once returner, non-returner. These are people who have irrevocably or uh, basically put an end to certain defilements, certain hindrances of mind that they will no longer backslide. Uh, they put, the stream enters put an end to doubt. Um, they put an end to personality views. They put an end to uh, attachment to rites and rituals. And then the once returner and non-returner have similarly decreased other uh, unwholesome tendencies of mind forever. Then you've got the arhant, which is the third type of person. And you've got a Buddha, a fully enlightened Buddha. And each of these beings, uh, the Buddha describes how they see the world. For the Patuchana, the unenlightened person, um, the Buddha says, he uses this word, uh, perceives. They perceive earth and earth, water and water. The Buddha, using these four um, elements, earth, fire, water, wind, which is the Buddhist conception of uh, physicality at the time, and describing different levels of beings, humans, animals, uh, all the way up to these different levels of gods, experiences, the eight jhanas, basically, mm -hmm. uh, levels of absorption and uh, diversity and self and how unenlightened Buddhas, uh, I'm sorry, unenlightened beings even see Nibbana, how they misperceive Nibbana. And the, the word that's used in the Pali is manyati. So a related uh, quote, which is uh, in maybe Majjhima 113, we can check on that, but Yeni yeni hi manyanti tatotanghoti anyatati, whatever way one conceives, the truth is ever other than that. And so that's true for Patujanas. We misperceive the world. We see what's dukkha as sukha, what's painful as pleasurable, what's impermanent as permanent, what is not self as self. We impute these, we misperceive the world. The seka, the partially enlightened person, um, sees more accurately. And the Buddha uses this uh, imperative language to say, train yourself, do not manyati, do not conceive earth and earth, do not misperceive mm -hmm. what's impermanent as permanent, what's not self as self, what's dukkha, uh, what's dukkha is actually sukha. So, and then the arhat, they have gotten rid of all their tendency towards manyati, towards uh, misperceiving the world. And the Buddha has fully seen that, fully mm -hmm. looked through and perceive reality as is. So the Buddha is describing the world and proscribing how all of us, and it's not just that one day, I mean, we need to train to even be these partially enlightened beings. The word the Buddha uses is seka or trainee. Mm -hmm. So we can put ourselves in the shoes, the sandals of the trainee and not conceive of the world in terms of self in terms of what is always pleasant and in terms of what's permanent. So what do you find intriguing about this sutta? Um, the first thing I think worth mentioning is centering in on that word manyati you, you pointed to, where the Buddha talks about how the Patujana conceives of themselves in earth, uh, of earth, apart from earth. Um, and the Pali uses all these different uh, declensions of that word earth, uh, ablative, locative, just all these ways we impute a self into the world around us from the base, uh, the elements, all the way up to these high notions of divinity. 
um, how we, it's almost like there's a sense of fondling, you know, we, we fondle these things and in the end we take delight in them, abhinandati. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and that's the word that in the Dhammachaka Bhavatana Sutta the Buddha uses to talk about the root of suffering is uh, nandi raga sahagata tatatata binandini, uh, delighting now here, now there. Mm-hmm. So this idea that unenlightened beings, we basically identify with all these things. And, you know, I, I think that the three different levels of the unenlightened worldling, the trainee, and finally the arhant, align with the three turnings of the wheel of Dhamma. Um, or of the Four Noble Truths in the Dhamma Chakrapavatana Sutta. There's the state of suffering, the Patujana. There's what should be done, and that's the Seka. And then there's this has been done, and that's the Arhant's knowledge. And then it's interesting that he does draw this distinction between the Buddha having known things to the end, parinya tang tang antang, uh, antang yeah. to the end, which is an interesting point. The one other thing I'd, I'd mention is, I think... It's useful to know, and this is one reason perhaps the bhikkhus do not delight, one of perhaps the only sutta where they don't delight in the Buddha's words, is there's a, uh, in the Vedas, there, the commentaries make clear that these were Brahmins who'd ordained as bhikkhus, and the commentaries at least say that many of them may have held a view uh, that stemmed from the Vedas of uh, a sort of sub- uh, a substrate of consciousness, which is the root of all things. And in classic fashion, the Buddha finds that hidden view, inverts it by saying, actually, what's the root of all things is craving, and it leads to suffering. And so they're not happy about that. But I see, I think you could look at this whole sutta as this refutation of a false view in, in these bhikkhus. Um, and... I'm curious, how would one apply this to their own life, Ajahn? Um, how have you thought of it or brought it into your experience? Uh, I think the Buddhist prescription to not conceive of the world this way um, is very much in line with, I think, Lumpur Sumedho's witticism. You know, don't believe everything you think. I mean, it's possible it's Tupacin children, but someone <laughs> or just Ajahn Chah's, um, yeah, asking, you know, not sure, not sure and putting... A question mark around yeah everything that I view I'm whatever way I conceive the truth is ever other than that so there's a term uh, epistemological humility so epistemology is our understanding of the world how we understand the world and the Buddha is just saying put a question mark on all of my senses of I really know you I really know this and I really know that so mm. um, yeah not sure and how do you find this helpful in your life? How do you apply it? You know, it can seem so foreign to talk about Pajapati, which in this formulation is the overlord of the universe. Um, but I think for us, you know, you can really think of these different concepts in terms of, you know, political parties or even uh, kind of new beliefs in uh, an underlying consciousness, things like this and how we identify with them and impute self into them. And just the Buddha saying, all those imputations and fondlings and delightings lead to suffering. So step back from all that. Um, So we can't relate to the exact cosmology, but we have our own cosmologies. Mm -hmm. And the quote that I really love, he does not delight in earth. Why is that? Because he has understood that delight is the root of suffering and that with being as conditioned, there is birth. And that for whatever has come to be, There's aging and death. Mm. And Ajahn, as usual, we end with a word of the day. So what's the word of today? Today's day, the word of the day is Putujana. And what does that mean? So that is a uninstructed worldling. So someone who has not yet attained to uh, any state of noble enlightenment, who hasn't put it into doubt. So that's Putujana. Well, thank you, Ajahn, and we'll see you all next week uh, Mm -hmm. and on Zoom, hopefully, in about one minute. All right.